Consider the binomial x plus y to the power of 1. Expand it and we get x plus y. Continue by expanding x plus y squared and we would get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Now we can also expand for x plus y cubed and so on. I want you to notice the pattern in the coefficients here. If I remove all the variables in each term, you might see a familiar pattern. It turns out that the coefficients are just the numbers in Pascal's triangle. But why? Adding numbers to form a triangle and algebra seems to be something completely different. So why do they relate? Consider x plus y squared. We can write it as x plus y times x plus y, and we can expand it out. In order to expand, we first have to choose an x or a y from the first bracket. In this case, we will be choosing x, and then we will choose an x or a y from the second bracket to go along with it. In this case, we will be choosing x, and we get xx. That will give us one term in the expansion. Now, if we do the same for choosing y in the second bracket, we will get another term, that is xy. We can now do the same process, but now choose the y from the first bracket, and we will get yx and yy. And here, notice that each term is made by choosing an x or a y from the first bracket, and choosing an x or a y from the second bracket. And when we expand all the terms out, we get every possible choice of x's and y's. Now consider x plus y cubed. To expand, we do the same process. We choose an x or a y from each bracket. And by going over all the possible choices, we get these terms. I will group the terms with the same number of x's and y's together and also write them using powers. And here you might see the connection to combinations. The coefficient for any given term is the number of arrangements of x's and y's in that term. For example, the coefficient of x squared y comes from the number of arrangements of two x's and one y. This is just like finding the arrangements of letters in a word. So the question of finding the coefficient becomes how many arrangements of x's and y's are there in that term. So is there an easier way to count the number of arrangements? Well, there is, and that is by using combinations. So in the case of x squared y, to count the number of arrangements of two x's and one y, we do three choose one. Why? Well, we must first choose one out of the three brackets to be a y. And after we have chosen the bracket with the y, we can let the other positions be filled with x's. Here, the number of ways to select one bracket out of three to be a y is three choose one. So by using the same logic, we can find the coefficients of other terms using combinations. So for x cubed, the coefficient would be the number of arrangements of three x's and zero y's. And because there are zero y's, we can find the number of arrangements by doing three choose zero. We can do a similar process for x, y squared, where we do 3 choose 2. And finally, we can do 3 choose 3 for y cubed. So we see that the expansion for x plus y cubed, each term can be written as a combination, where the bottom number is the number of y's and the top number is the power, because in each case, there are three brackets to choose from. Also note here that I've written the expansion in increasing powers of y to make it look neat. So that's it for the expansion of x plus y cubed. But what about in the general case x plus y to the n? In order to prove the result for power n, we do a similar procedure. For x to the n, there are n x's and 0 y's, so the coefficient is n choose 0. For 
x to the n minus 1 times y. There are n minus 1 x's and 1 y. So the coefficient is n choose 1, as we are choosing 1 bracket to be a y. We can continue this for other terms. And we see that in the general case, x n minus k, y to the k, there's going to be n choose k of them. The coefficient will be n choose k. Because we are choosing k y's from n brackets. So the expansion of x plus y to the n can be written as follows. But because combinations arrange these ways, such as the numbers in a row of Pascal's triangle, we see binomial coefficients in Pascal's triangle. Although I quite like the proof by counting as it explains why the coefficients in a binomial expansion are combinations, I also want to prove this theorem using induction. I will be assuming you know how to do induction here. We first test for the base case when n equals 1 and x plus y to the power of 1 is just x plus y but could also be written using combinations here. So we know that it is true for n equals 1. Assume that the theorem is true for n equals k. So x plus y to the k is as follows. And now we have to prove that the theorem is also true for k plus 1. x plus y to the k plus 1 can be written as x plus y times x plus y to the k. And because we assumed that the theorem is true for k, we can expand x plus y to the k as follows. Now I'm going to further expand x plus y. So first multiply everything by x, then multiply everything by y. Feel free to pause the video and verify the expansion here. And now we are going to group like terms together and factor the variables out. Now notice that the coefficients are a sum of two combinations, excluding x to the k plus 1 and y to the k plus 1. And here we can actually use Pascal's identity to simplify the sum into a single combination. And we can also write the combination k choose 0 as k choose 1, k plus 1 choose 0, and the combination k choose k as k plus 1 choose k plus 1. Thus, the theorem is true for n equals k plus 1, if it is true for n equals k. But because the theorem is true for n equals 1, by the principle of mathematical induction, it is true for all natural numbers.